The term partition carries profound and poignant significance in the South Asian context, unlike its more benign usage elsewhere. Nearly seven decades ago, as the British relinquished control over the jewel in the crown of their empire, the subcontinent witnessed the birth of two independent nations Pakistan and India. This momentous event, marked by unprecedented violence, symbolized not just the end of colonial rule, but also the dawn of independence. It served as the pivotal point, a year zero, in the national histories of two nations, initiating a complex process of othering between neighboring countries that persists to this day. The partition of South Asia, occurring as a singular event, encapsulated multifaceted meanings it, was the culmination of colonialism, the attainment of independence, and the genesis of a reciprocal othering. The aftermath brought forth mass migrations, fraught with challenges such as loss, violence, displacement, resettlement, identity renegotiation, and the grappling with traumas and legacies. In essence, the partition of the subcontinent was aptly termed the Great Partition. The author advocates for a more humanistic understanding of displacement, by drawing parallels between the South Asian events of 1946-47 and analogous occurrences worldwide. They call for interdisciplinary collaboration, lamenting the disconnect between historical approaches and social scientific perspectives on displacement. This disconnect, as the author notes, hinders a comprehensive grasp of the phenomenon. Turning back to the specifics of the 1947 events, the author underscores the importance of diversifying the study of partition history. They propose examining it through various lenses, from the intensely personal and emotional individual and family experiences to the local, national, and transnational perspectives. The preface also delves into the narrative aspect cautioning against the limitations and risks of overly factional and simplistic partition narratives. The author acknowledges the progress made in partition scholarship over the years, leading to a deeper understanding of the events. However, they highlight the persistent neglect of crucial aspects, particularly the need to investigate and comprehend the roles of perpetrators individuals communities, and political leaders. The introduction of the book lays out its primary themes, which subsequent chapters delve into analytically. These themes include the inaccuracies in the partition plan and its repercussions, the pivotal role of the South Asian middle class, the unprecedented violence stemming from the creation of new borders, and the resulting refugee crisis and the initiation in India and Pakistan of a dialectical process of self-definition and definition of the other rooted deeply in the partition narrative. The first chapter delves into the historical background of partition, dispelling the notion that it was a sudden and inexplicable event. Instead, it demonstrates its deep roots in the transformations occurring in urban India, accelerated by the wartime industrial boom. Additionally, it highlights the impact of wartime politics, the demobilization of the Indian army, and the politicization of religious identity during colonial rule. The second chapter focuses on the Indian general elections of 1946, exploring the politicization and polarization of religious sentiments, fueled by the electoral propaganda of both the Muslim League and the Indian National Congress. The third chapter scrutinizes the Cabinet Mission's plan of March 1946, intended to facilitate the British handover of power, and criticizes the dangerous ambiguity surrounding the concept of Pakistan championed by the Muslim League. 
the fourth chapter analyzes the collapse of trust among political leaders and the general populace, against the backdrop of escalating violence, starting with the direct action day of August 1946 in Bengal. This crisis rapidly intensified in Punjab, descending into civil war, with policymakers in London showing a disinterest. Chapter 5 explores the approval of the partition plan by the Indian National Congress and the British, examining the reactions from various sections of the population. The sixth chapter details the actual partition of land and people on the western border, highlighting the oversights of the Boundary Commission's plan, and the resultant shock and anxiety among Punjabis, especially Sikhs. In the summer of 1947, the actual war begins, as described in the seventh chapter, depicting the rushed withdrawal of the British, ethnic cleansing in Punjab, and the psychological mechanisms of violence triggered by anxiety, rumors, and propaganda. The eighth chapter portrays the contradictions and challenges faced by the newly formed nations in the aftermath, including food scarcity, a paralyzed state, and the ambivalence surrounding Independence Day. Chapter 9 examines the immediate consequences of mass migration, analyzing the experiences of refugees, and the efforts made by both governments, to address the challenges of resettlement. The tenth chapter focuses on the individual traumas inflicted by displacement, advocating for a more humanized history of partition displacement. In conclusion, The Great Partition is a thoroughly researched, well-written, and humanistic book that imparts essential lessons. It dispels the notion of partition as an abrupt and inexplicable event, revealing it as the culmination of historical, political, and psychological processes. It emphasizes that partition was not unavoidable, implicating various actors, including the sudden withdrawal of the British and segments of the Indian middle class. Lastly, it recognizes partition as the genesis of a new era, marked by collective and individual traumas that continue to resonate even after seven decades.